All right, let's get started. First of all, we'll open the resources folder downloaded from this section, as usual. There are three additional folders and a supplementary workbook file inside it. You will find the source code of the finished project in the green folder. The source code can help you when you get stuck and need some quick assistance. In the pink folder, you will find all the resource materials. Finally, we are going to save our new project in the blue folder. Great. Now let's open the workbook document and take a brief look at the learning objectives. As you can notice, there is a comprehensive list of the topics we will cover in this SwiftUI project. Are you such excited as I'm? Cool. Now let's close this document and open Xcode with the latest version downloaded from the App Store. New Project Our first step is to create a new Xcode project from the Welcome screen. There is a new pop-up window from which first we need to select the iOS menu bar. After that, we need to choose the app template from the available options. Finally, click on the Next button to go to the Project Configuration window. Now, we need to configure this new iOS project. For the product name enter, restart. For the team option, if you already have an Apple developer account, logging in here allows you to build your app on a real device. If you don't have an Apple developer account, you can skip this part and test your app in the iOS simulator on your Mac. Organization identifier. We usually enter our website address in reverse order. For example, academy.credo. Please make sure that your organization is different so you can compile the provided finished project if it's necessary. The bundle identifier is automatically combined from the project name and the organization identifier. Next, the app interface must be SwiftUI. After that, let's keep Swift as the primary programming language. Finally, since we will not use core data or unit testing in this project, therefore please uncheck these options. After all of the necessary settings, click on the Next button. And now we need to tell Xcode where we want to save our SwiftUI project on the computer. Please navigate to the Students folder as the destination as I do. Now, click on the Create button. And Xcode creates all files and folders for this advanced project. App icons. Splendid. Now we'll start the development by adding the prepared high-quality resource materials to the project. First, select the Assets Catalog in the Project Navigator panel. Then click on the App icon in the middle panel. You can see an empty set of icons on the right part of the editor. Second, please open a new Finder window and navigate to the Resources folder as I show you. We need to open the App icon folder and select all files in this subfolder. Here, we're going to add this set of icons to the Restart project. After that, we will copy every file to the clipboard at once. Then jump back to Xcode and right-click or Control-click on the app icon group as I show you. By doing this, a new context menu will show up. Select the Show in Finder option from this menu. And Xcode will bring us to the Projects Icons folder in a new Finder window. Next, open the App Icon said folder. There is only a so-called Content JSON file in it. Paste everything from the clipboard into this place. You will be asked to replace the existing file. Obviously, click on the Replace button and we are good to go. Excellent job so far. Sound files. Now, it's time to add the rest of the asset files to the project. Go back to the root of the Resources folder. Then select the Characters folder there. After that, drag and drop this specific folder into the middle pane of the editor, as I show you. Great. With that. We have just added two professional illustrations to this project. We will add two sound files with different file extensions directly to the project instead of the assets catalog. First, open the sounds folder. Then drag and drop all sound files here into the root folder of our project in the project navigator pane as I do. When a new window pops up, then select the copy items if needed in the create folder references options. Before clicking on the finish button, Ensure that the Restart project is also selected as a target. These settings are very important to get access to these sound files later on. Splendid. After that, select these sound files in the Project Navigator. And by secondary click on them, let us create a new group from the selection. Give this folder the sound's name. To make sure that we added these files correctly to the project, we will check them out before continuing. That's being said. First select one of the sound files in the folder. 
Then make sure that the target membership and the location of this file is our restart project in the attributes pane on the right side of Xcode. If everything is correct, then we can move on. Color sets. Now, go back to the project navigator pane and click on the assets library. Here we're going to add a new accent color to this project. To do that, first, select the accent color set in the middle pane. Then please, select the empty color slot in the editor window as I show you. After that, go to the color section in the attributes panel and change the color environment from none to either sRGB or display P3. It will allow us to enter our custom color. The easiest way to do this is to enter the hexadecimal value of the color. That's why we need to change the input from floating point to 8-bit hexadecimal. Then enter the following hex value. Hash 5 3 A 4 D 6 As you can see in the editor, we have just added a blue color for the project's accent color. Our program will automatically use this specific color on various occasions during development. How cool is that? But we don't stop here since we need to create two new color sets. So let's do it right now. First, select this blue color in the editor. And by pressing the Command plus C shortcut keys, please copy it to the clipboard. After that, go to the bottom part of the middle panel and click on the plus button as I show you. This action will pop up a new context menu, where we can create a new color set. For this new color set, Please add the following name, color, blue, with capital letters. As you can see, we need to select each white color slot in the editor and replace it with our custom blue color from the clipboard by pressing the Command plus V shortcut keys. We are done with it. Easy peasy, isn't it? Now let's create a new red color set, shall we? Like before, please click on the plus button in the middle pane. And let's create a new color set. Then, give it the name, color, red. Before editing these default white colors, we will need to select both of them in the editor. Finally, go to the attributes pane and enter the following hexadecimal value for this color. Hash C67976. Excellent job so far. If you like keeping the assets files organized, please put the custom red and blue colors into a new folder as I show you. Then we will give it the name, Colors. Awesome. After doing all this necessary prep work, we are ready to start developing the Restart application. Project Structure. But before we start coding, we will create all folders that we need beforehand. You know, you can watch some sloppy developers on YouTube who likes to do this housekeeping later on when their whole project is a big mess or skip it altogether. However, I would like to show you that continuous project organization can help us focus on more essential things. After all, being a developer in the industry for a while, it's not rocket science to know beforehand what kind of folders and files we will need to have. Besides that, we can change our minds whenever we want if it's necessary. Okay, enough with the talk, and let's jump into it. First of all, select the content view file in the project navigator, and let's create a new group folder from this selection. Then give it the name, Screens. In this folder, we will place all the main screens of this iPhone application. Next, select the root folder. And let's create a new empty folder in it. For this group, give it the name, Views. In this folder, we will place some small individual views. We can treat them as components that we can reuse from time to time. Or we can just expand them from our existing screens and keep them concise. And finally, we need to create another folder in which we will hold some utility functions and such them. For example, we can add a Swift file here that will play a sound effect. Give it the name, Utilities. And we are done here. Splendid. Now let's move on to the next job. Settings. Sometimes we need to take extra steps before we can start coding on our project. Sometimes we just jump into it immediately. It always depends. In our case, it is a must. That's why we need to select the main project in the Project Navigator pane. As I show you, it will bring us the Project Settings window. As you can see, the first menu item in the tab bar is so-called General Settings. And under this menu, we can find the Deployment Info section. In this place, first, 
Make sure that the target iOS version is 15 or higher. The second thing that we need to change is the device orientation, if it's necessary. Then check the portrait option as I do. The reason behind it is that this iPhone app works best in portrait mode. Now let's see how things work so far, shall we? Testing. We will need to build and run this project either in the simulator or on a real device to check our app. Click on the run button on the toolbar and see what will happen. As you can see, there is the app icon that we added to this project on the home screen. Shortly after it, the app starts launching. I pause the video to show the empty screen that we can see during this initial launch period. Developers call this a launch screen. And by default, it is an empty screen. It could be a white or black screen, depending on the appearance of the device. The duration of how long we can see it depends on many things. For example, when we install a new application downloaded from the App Store, then during the first launch, our application initializes many things to run smoothly later on. This so-called cold launch could take some seconds at the first time. However, each additional launch will decrease the duration of how long this launch screen appears on the screen. Not to forget to mention that if we have the latest and best performing iPhone device, then there may be no launch screen visible at all. It always depends on many things. As I told you before, but one thing is sure, it shouldn't be an empty screen. Apple gives us the ability to add some static and only visual elements to it. And this is what we will do shortly after this test. The next thing. After the launch, we must see the default hello. World. Welcome message on the screen. Okay. There is nothing special there but let's see how this app works when we rotate it from portrait to horizontal, shall we? If you are using the simulator for testing, then we can rotate the simulator window by pressing the command plus left arrow or right arrow keys. And, there it goes. Have you noticed that this welcome message followed the rotation? Let me show you again. That's strange, isn't it? We explicitly told in the settings that we want this app to work only in portrait mode. Then why does this rotation happen? My answer made by many years of development is that Xcode is not perfect. And we sometimes need to deal with certain annoying little things. And knowing that software engineers at Apple are working on improving it year by year gives us hope. In my opinion, hands down. Xcode is still the best tool to develop applications for Apple platforms. But back to this quirky behavior. It's not hard to fix it at all if you know where to find its bug. That said, let's go for a quick bug hunting. Problem solving. Jump back to Xcode. And let's navigate to the info tab item as I show you. Under this menu. You will see a property list. With this property list, developers can manipulate some aspects of how applications work. This property list consists of key and value pairs in each line, as you can notice. And this is the place where redundant information avoids us forcing the portrait mode. Search for the line where you can see the supported interface orientations for iPhone key option. Now pay close attention to each piece of information I give you because editing this property list is not easy. First, click on the right chevron icon before this list as I do. This action unfolds the extra information that was added when we created this project from the default iOS template at the beginning. Watch out for the two landscape values in this list item. These are the landscape left and right orientations. We do not need them since these options prevent us from using the app in only portrait mode. To get rid of them, simply click on the gray minus button as I show you, if you did it correctly. Then only the portrait option remained under this setting. Now, if we build and run the project, then we should see the result of that. So let's do it right now. Try to rotate the device and check out what's happening on the screen. If everything goes right, we shouldn't see the welcome message rotating on the screen in the landscape mode. Can you see it? Our fix works like a charm. And from now on, users can use this application only in portrait orientation. Now, please jump back to Xcode, and let's continue adding a simple launch screen to this project. Alright, we must be on the same info menu as before. And now we need to find the launch screen settings in the property list. Here it is. The first step is to unfold the list item as I show you. As you can see, there is an empty dictionary in it. We won't bother with adding a storyboard-based launch screen this time. Instead, we will add a new entry by clicking on the plus button. So please. Let's do it as I show you. After clicking on the plus button, a new drop-down menu will appear for us. From this menu, select the background color option as I do. By selecting this option, Xcode will add this new key to the launch screen. 
The last thing that we need to do here is to add some value to this key. Please, click on the empty key cell in the value columns and enter the following string. Color, blue. Are you done? Nice job. Guess what? Our new launch screen is done. Now without further ado, let's check out how this new launch screen works. Build and run the project. If you pay close attention to the screen, you should see a nice blue screen. Congratulations! No matter how long this launch screen is visible for the users, this blue color fits better than the previous empty white screen. From the beginning until now, we have accomplished many things that were necessary for this project. Now, we will move on and start coding. Our goal with this tutorial is to lay out every essential thing for the upcoming advanced sections. Basic functionality. That's being said, we're going to develop the most needed functionality of this application. But don't worry too much, since it won't take long. And by the end of this lesson, everything will be ready for us. We will continue our work by creating two additional screens. Go to the Screens folder. And let's add a new SwiftUI file to it. Give it the name Onboarding View. And save it. Now let's create another SwiftUI file in the same folder. Give it the name Home View and save it into the screen folder as well. Excellent job! Now select the content view file as I do. This SwiftUI file will be the central hub of our application, and depending on its current state, it will show either the home screen or the onboarding screen. To achieve this goal, we need to have two things. The first thing is to have a property that will hold our application's initial and further state. That said, let's create a particular property for that. Please enter the following code before the body as I show you. At App Storage Onboarding Var Is Onboarding View Active? Boolean Equals True First, this new property will set up a new onboarding key in App Storage. The first part, this app storage is a special SwiftUI property wrapper that will use the user's defaults under the hood. Its purpose is to store some value on the device's permanent storage by utilizing a get and set method. The second part, this is a unique key identifier that we can refer to later on. By using this key, we can edit or recall its saved value on the device storage. The third part, this is the actual property name that we can use in this SwiftUI file. The fourth part, this is where we set the initial value of the property. In our case, this value will be initialized only one time with a true value. This is an essential thing, and I will reveal something crucial about it a little bit later. The logic behind this code is that when users start the application, the very first screen they should see is the onboarding screen. The next step is to create a conditional statement. And in this new condition, we can display the appropriate screen depending on the actual state of this new property stored in the app storage. That's being said, replace the entire welcome message with this new code. ZStack If is onboarding view active Onboarding view Else Home view The ZStack is a container and we can use it to display different views on top of each other. And in this container, we created the main functionality of how this application works. If the is onboarding view active boolean property is true, then it will display the onboarding view. In the opposite case, users will see the home view. Nothing fancy there. With this little code, we are basically done here. But to make this work properly, we need to edit the other two screens. Onboarding screen. Please select the onboarding view file in the project. Then replace the welcome message with this code. Text onboarding. Font. Large title. After then, command plus click on the text view to reveal a contextual menu as I show you. From this list, please select the embed in vstack option. Then add this code to it. Spacing. 20. Next, add this code to its ending as well. New comment, the end of the V stack. By the way, this vertical stack container will allow us to add more views after each other. That's being said, let's add a new button after the text view, shall we? Enter this code. Button. Action. 
New comment. Some action. Text. Start. We want to navigate users to the home view when they tap on this button. You know what? We can do that effortlessly by changing the value of the onboarding key that we have just stored in the content view screen. But to achieve this goal, first, we need to create a new property to access this key using the app storage property wrapper. Enter this code at the top. At app storage. Onboarding. Var. Is onboarding view active? Boolean equals true. As you can see, this code is identical to our previous one. And if you are an experienced developer coming from another field than app development with the SwiftUI framework, then you might be confused by the end part of this code. It seems that we are setting a new value for this property again. But in reality, this special app storage property wrapper works differently. This true value will only be added to this property when the program does not find the onboarding key in the user default storage. Just let me paraphrase it in another way. If our program finds the onboarding key in the user default storage, then it will skip this initialization. And since we have initialized this onboarding key in the previous file, therefore the end part of this code will be ignored. So this is how we can access the previously stored value of the onboarding key. I hope you are not confused anymore by how this special app storage property wrapper works in SwiftUI. Now, let's go down to business because we still have some things to do before calling the day. Please, navigate to the buttons action and replace the comment with this code. Is onboarding view active? Equals False. This is where we change the actual value of the property from true to false. So the program can switch the onboarding screen to the home screen. This screen change will be automatically done once the program notices the changes in the property. This is the beauty of writing code in SwiftUI's declarative style. The only thing that we still need to do is to repeat this process in the home view, so users can go back to the onboarding view if they want. Home screen. Open the home view file and change the text view with this new code. Text. Home. Font. Large title. This text view and its modifier will show a big text indicating that we are on the home screen. Easy peasy, isn't it? Now let's practice what we have learned so far. First, we will work on the layout a little bit. Embed the text view into a new vertical stack container, as I show you. V stack. Spacing. 20. New comment. The end of the vertical stack container. After that, let's create a new button below the text view. Enter this code. Button. Action. New comment. Some action. Text. Restart. With that, our layout of this screen is done for now. Now in order to change back the home screen to the onboarding screen, we will need access to the value of the onboarding key stored on the device. By using the app storage property wrapper, we can do it with ease. So let's do it. Enter this code at the top. At app storage. Onboarding. Var. Is onboarding view active? Boolean equals false. Please do not forget we do not set the property's value here. It's just for safety reasons in case the program does not find the onboarding key in the permanent storage. The last task is to change the actual value of this property when users tap on the button. To do that, please navigate to the button and replace the comment with this new code. Is onboarding view active? Equals true. And guess what? We have just finished this long lesson by laying down all the necessary settings and basic functionality of this application. Final testing. But before we jump to the next lesson, we should test how our code works. To do that, please build and run the project. Then let's test the app either on your iPhone device or in the simulator. After the launch, we should see the onboarding screen. This is the first screen that users should see when they start the app the first time. It just works as it is supposed to do. Next, let's see what will happen when we tap on the start button. There it goes. The onboarding screen was replaced by the home screen. How cool is that? At first sight, this app looks like a very basic one. But behind the scene, we have just learned how to use the special app storage property wrapper to store, edit and recall its value using the device's permanent storage. To check it out, please close the application and reopen it. If everything goes well, then we should see the home screen again. And there it is. By taping on the restart button, we can change and store the new state of the app. 
So next time we open this app, we can see the onboarding screen once again. All right, I really hope you enjoyed this introductory lecture and you are ready to deep dive into some pretty advanced coding with SwiftUI in the upcoming classes. I can promise you that you will have a pretty darn good app designed on your hand by the end of the following lecture. Are you ready for some fun with SwiftUI? Then see you at the class.